Yang berhormat Datuk Seri Dr. S. Subramanian, Menteri Kesihatan Malaysia. Yang berbahagia Profesor Datuk Dr. Mazlin Mokhtar, Timbalan Naik Chancellor, Hal Ehwal Pendidikan dan Inovasi, mewakili Naik Chancellor Universiti Kebangsaan Malaysia. Yang berbahagia Profesor Dr. Siti Samratul Maisarah Mukhari, Dekan Fakulti Sains Kesihatan Universiti Kebangsaan Malaysia. Yang berbahagia Profesor Dr. Sharanjit Kaur, Pengurusi Jawatan Kuasa Penganjur ICHAD 2015, Barisan Pentadbir Fakulti Sains Kesihatan, Diftif Kehormat, Penceramah-penceramah jemputan, peserta-peserta simposium, seterusnya hadirin dan hadirat yang dihormati sekalian. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi dan selamat pagi serta selamat datang. Izinkan saya meneruskan majlis dalam bahasa Inggeris. Good morning and welcome to the International Symposium of Health Sciences 2015 organized by the Faculty of Health Sciences, University Kebangsaan Malaysia. I'm Basha Othman, your MC for this opening ceremony which will be soon officiated by Dr. Sri Dr. S. Subramaniam, the Health Minister of Malaysia. Thank you, Dr. Sri, for being with us this morning. The International Symposium of Health Sciences, or ICHAD for short, is a biennial event hosted by the Faculty of Health Sciences. This year, our theme is All for Health. This reflects the call for strategic and effective collaboration in all aspects of health, crucial in ensuring optimal outcomes. To further deliberate on this, I'd like to invite Yang Berbahagia, Professor Dr. Sharanjit Kaur, the chairperson of the organizing committee, to deliver her welcoming remarks. Salam Satu Malaysia and a very good morning. On behalf of the organizing committee, I'd like to extend a big warm welcome to all of you this morning to the International Symposium of Health Sciences, or ICHAD 2015. A special thanks to our Minister of Health, Datuk Sri Dr. S. Subramanian, who is here with us to officiate this opening ceremony shortly. Ladies and gentlemen, ICHAD 2015 is an event that has been organized and hosted by the Faculty of Health Science ever since the faculty's <coughs> inception. Therefore, this symposium is deeply entrenched in our faculty's tradition for the past 20 years. This year, this event is made possible with our partner representatives of several organizations and networks from a variety of health science sectors. The multidisciplinary nature of our faculty <coughs> has shaped ICHAD to be a multidisciplinary symposium. One of the keys to good health practices and healthcare is the understanding of different approaches, perspectives, and sensitivities among the multiple players in health science. And this is indeed what we showcase this year. Just a glimpse of our program for the next two days from our invited speakers and forum panelists the topics are interprofessional collaboration, habilitation for children with special needs, infectious diseases, non-communicable diseases, palliative care, geriatric issues, mental health, and nutrition. There are also oral and poster presentations by the participants with topics that are wide-ranged based on various designs and types of studies. There is also a session dedicated to the young researchers. This young investigator session will inculcate the culture of knowledge sharing and hone the skills of research sharing among our budding researchers. <coughs> the highly varied content of this two-day symposium befits the theme, All for Health. This is an opportunity for all participants from various sectors, work environment, and specialities to meet, initiate, and participate in the fruitful discussions and collaborations. I am sure many new networks will be forged after this symposium. 
It is our hope that events such as ICEHAP 2015 will help to disseminate research findings among researchers and practitioners alike. Research in healthcare and health services is crucial because it ensures safe, effective and efficient service delivery. The researchers should not be a separate entity from the practitioners. Similarly, the practitioners should be in constant communication with the researchers. In the Faculty of Health Sciences UKM, many of the researchers are practitioners too. This way, research findings are quickly translated into practice. I understand that this may not be the case in other sectors, where research findings may take some time to reach and be applied. The bottom line is, researchers and practitioners must be aligned because we are indeed all for health. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank the organizing committee for their hard work. Despite the challenges faced in this period of gloomy economy, the persistence, diligence, and relentless effort since the formation of the committee about one and a half years ago have made it possible for us to gather today in this symposium. We also acknowledge and highly <coughs> appreciate continuous support from our partner representatives and networks from various health science disciplines. Our heartfelt appreciation also goes to all vendors and sponsors who have supported this symposium. Last but not least, I wish all delegates, conference speakers, exhibitors <coughs> and country representatives a wonderful and successful two-day event. May you all have a memorable conference. At the same time, don't forget to enjoy your stay in the beautiful city of Kuala Lumpur. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Sharanjit, for the speech. Ladies and gentlemen, now I'd like to call upon Yang Rabahagia, Professor Dr. Marvin Mokta, Deputy Vice Chancellor of Research and Innovation Affairs, representing the Vice Chancellor of University Kebangsaan Malaysia, to deliver his speech. Terima kasih banyak-banyak Dr. Basha dan juga pada-pada Haji Razak yang baca kata Tuhan tadi. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. And a very good morning. Yang berhormat, Datuk Sri S. Subramaniam, Minister of Health. Professor Dr. Siti Zamratul Maisarah Mukari, Dean Faculty of Health Sciences, UKM. Professor Dr. Sharon Jit Kaul, <coughs> Chairperson ICH 2015, Distinguished Professors, including professors from Swansea University and colleague, and also partner. I like the jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Invited speakers, participants, ladies and gentlemen. First and foremost, on behalf of Vice Chancellor Professor Datuk Dr. Nur Azlan Razadi, I would like to take this opportunity to welcome Yang Berbahagia Yang Berhormat Menteri uh, Datuk Sri S. Subramanyam, honored guests, all participants, and fellow academics to the International Symposium of Health Sciences 2015. I also would like to extend a special welcome to Again, Yang Berhormat Datuk Sri S. Subramaniam, despite his busy schedule, to come over and in a few minutes we'll officiate his opening ceremony. University Kebangsaan Malaysia, the National University, recently celebrated its 45th anniversary with the theme Guardian of the Nation. Our unwavering focus has been and will always be serving the country and the communities. For all of us at UKM, this has always been our collective heart and soul as translated by our work in the community because we are indeed the guardians of the nation. UKM initiates uh, numerous community projects in the health sciences. Our university pioneered the cochlear implant program in Malaysia and the first such program also in Southeast Asia. 
The cochlear implant program makes it possible for those children who are born deaf to now learn, listen, talk, and thereby take their place alongside their hearing peers in mainstream schools. In Vision Science, UKM Special Training Program assists children to overcome their visual impairment and actively participate in classroom activities. Faculty of Health Sciences, the researchers of this faculty, and clinicians have been conducting combined service and research projects including in remote areas such as the Orang Aski Kampos, the villages of the indigenous community throughout the country. The faculty has also ran a successful weight loss program, assisting people to manage their weight loss by following an evidence-based program monitored by researchers and clinicians. Our expertise in Addis Mosquito is critical to the nation's fight against dengue. And one such uh, program has also had the opportunity to be linked up with one of the companies, uh, Antogenics, on a program called Community Bebas Dengue, Dengue Free Community. So it's a few, in the few years, we hope, through the leadership of Dr. Associate Professor Dr. Fati, seated them with colleagues from not only from this faculty but other faculties and institutes of UKM, we try to come up with this very comprehensive program. Chapter 3 on community investing. And our forensic science program, led by Cairo and Dr. Cairo and colleagues in this faculty, has also impressed the general public who, who now realize that Malaysia does indeed have the real CSI officers in our midst. So, also in the pipeline, some very ambitious programs and projects involving other agencies in this area. These are just a few of the faculty's community projects. There are many others currently running successfully and there will be many more to come. Since their inception, UKM's Faculty of Health Sciences has been producing health professionals to service the community. Our lecturers, as mentioned by Prof. Sharan, are tasked with training undergraduates to become competent clinicians. Unusual for a university, many of our lecturers are also practicing clinicians, as explained already by Roshara in her speech. This enables our clinic to offer an enviable level of expertise and facilitates interprofessional collaboration. So not only to stress upon theory, but also clinical practice and other good practices related to health sciences to be disseminated and shared with the community. This is very much in line also, Yang Brahman Dato Sri, with the initiative of University Kebangsa and Malaysia being in a special network with United Nations University. It is called INAID, International Network to Advance Transdiscipline Education and Research. To achieve I Sehat 2015 theme, today our theme is All for Health. This is very good indeed. We all must be on the bandwagon. Everyone at every level of the community, all the different areas of expertise and sectors, from policy makers to business conglomerates, from academics to clinicians, from frontline health and medical services to the general public, who are the service recipients. Only then can we ensure that healthcare and health services are provided appropriately, adequately, and ethically. Symposium such as this one provide the platform for us to plan activities to further disseminate and implement the findings of our research to the wider community. While, while waiting for your arrival, that was three, the Dean and Prof. Sharon and I, and some of the professors here, we deliberated for a bit, maybe in future years, we would like to combine further the health sciences with the medic and other centers, including the business community, to come in and package something useful, not only for Malaysia, but maybe for the ASEAN economy community as well. At this juncture also, I would like to share, last week, 
we had a special meeting with WHO and United Nations University in Kuala Lumpur, together with Tan Sri Professor Zakri, advisor of science to Prime Minister, launching the special issue of the Lancet, safeguarding human health in the Anthropocene epoch. This is a summary of the Rockefeller Foundation Lancet Commission on Planetary Health. I hope they will allow all of us to have a special issue of this Lancet. I saw a nodding already from Dr. Funky. But I will share a couple of interesting points in here. What WHO, United Nations University, would like to do is combine experts of health, such as Dr. Sri and all participants here, to also link whatever you are teaching, whatever you are researching with the, with the environment, the world surrounding you, the planetary health. Because the contention is, if the world surrounding us is not healthy, then human being is not healthy. This, this effort might be sped up. I, I, I read some of the important points from this very special, interesting report. By almost any measure, human health is better now than at any time in history. Life expectancy has increased from 47 years in the 50s to 69 years in the year 2000 until 2010. And the death rates in children younger than 5 years have decreased substantial, substantially. But these gains in human health have come at a high price. The degradation of nature's ecological systems on a scale never seen in human history. A growing body of evidence shows that health of humanity is linked to the health of the environment. But by this action, humanity now threatens to destabilize the Earth's key life support system. And it went on and on. It says, the commission shows that many projected environmental changes can be avoided and that the connections between people and the planet mean that solutions that benefit natural systems often also benefit human health. Opportunities exist to foster and harness new knowledge, to exploit new technologies, to improve health and reduce environmental damage, and to improve governance. And it went on, it went on a little bit. And it says that the Earth's biophysical systems that many argue have entered a new geological epoch, the Anthropocene. So we are the culprit now. So we must take responsibility to try and repair. Environmental alteration, alterations such as climate change, ocean acidification, land regradation, water scarcity, over-exploitation of fishery, and biodiversity loss pose serious challenges to human health in isolation. But together, they create a total effect far worse than the sum of its parts. The potential consequences for human health are far-reaching, ranging from food insecurity and undernutrition, conflict and displacement to the increasing emergence of zoonotic diseases. And in closing, they say, health professionals will have a crucial role, not only in supporting <coughs> policy makers, but also in increasing the resilience of health systems to environmental change, reducing the environment footprint of health systems, and in making sure the benefits of balancing investment between the health of present and future populations are fully realized. <coughs> Humanity can chart a safe, healthy, and prosperous course throughout the 21st century by addressing the unacceptable inequity inequities in health and wealth within the environment limits of the Earth. Before closing this speech, young Roman Patrice, Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to again, on behalf of the Vice Chancellor and all at UKM, to thank the Minister of Health, Dato S. Dato Sri S. Subramanian, for spending time with us this morning. I also extend again our warm and healthiest welcome to all delegates and participants, and hope that your active participation 
will make a big difference not only to this symposium, but to the country and the region as well and beyond. Have a good conference, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Dr. Dr. Mazling, for the speech. Ladies and gentlemen, now it is with great pleasure for me to invite Yang Berkhormat, Dr. Sri, Dr. S. Subramaniam, the Health Minister of Malaysia, to deliver his speech and launch the opening of ICH 2015. Yang Berbahagia, Professor Dr. Dr. Mazling Mokhtar, Timbalan Naib Chancellor Mahalayawal Penyelidikan dan Nawasi, Mewakili Naib Chancellor Universiti Kebangsaan Malaysia, Yang berbahagia Profesor Dr. Siti Zamratul Maisharah Mukari, Dekan Fakulti Sains Kesehatan. Yang berbahagia Profesor Dr. Saranjit Kaur, Pengurusi Jawatan Kuasa Penganjur, Barisan Pendadbir Fakulti Sains Kesehatan, Dave Dave Kauruman, para jemputan tuan-tuan dan sahabat yang so much glad. First, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to be in this function that is the International Health Sciences Symposium, organized by the Faculty of uh, Health Sciences, University of Bangsan, Malaysia. Just now, when I was talking to Professor Dr. Siti, she enlightened me that this faculty encompasses 11 different types of health sciences. The Ministry of Health the Department of Allied Health Sciences, which is your equivalent, actually regulates 23 different types of allied health sciences. And uh, allied health sciences are an integral part of our health system and uh, is essential. And the health system cannot function without the complementary and supportive roles provided by the allied health sciences <coughs> towards the professionals in the delivery of the total health system. So it's an integral part. Neither can function by itself. Uh, an ENT surgeon probably would be lost if an audiologist like Dr. City is not present in his office. So for that reason, it's important that the entire team functions in cohesion to actually move up the entire delivery of health as an integral part of the health system. And it's important as you do that to inculcate a very high degree of professionalism within the various fields in the health sciences. And we have to improve standards, and we have to be part of the advances uh, of science and possibly contribute towards the greater development of science. As we all know, science is dynamic, it's not static. So unless and until we are part of this dynamism, we will be left behind. And it's advancing so rapidly that any attempt even to take rest for a short period of time might leave, you, might, might leave you behind for a long, long time. So that's why it's absolutely important that all people who have chosen to be part of this broader spectrum of what is called health sciences, or what we call allied health sciences, are part of this mainstream of the continuous evolution of knowledge and not be sidelined in that process of evolution. And to be part of that, we have to be prepared for a very high degree of inquisitiveness, which is essential. It's not illegal in this country to be inquisitive. So you have a right to question, right to think, right to have an unbridled mind which will question the normality and those are the things which actually becomes good fodder for better growth. And it's impo important that we do this to, to reach greater horizons. And uh, 
even a person like me, just to keep myself mind, mind young and futuristic. One of the more uh, the, the the TV programs which I like to see is a program called Discovery Science in the Discovery Channel. Because through that, you actually see how the new the human mind can look at totally different things. This morning, I was watching a program on television. We, we start off our day by watching TV, unlike most of you. Uh, uh, and uh, I saw this very interesting program of an attempt to grow vegetables in the spaceship because of the desire that, that people who travel in spaceships don't have access to fresh vegetables. It was very interesting how they actually succeeded in growing lettuce in a spaceship and it actually showed the people in the spaceship eating this lettuce which they had grown. So this is an example of how if the human mind is controlled, it would not have thought of the possibility of being able to grow a vegetable in a spaceship. It is because it opened itself to the possibility. That is when no ideas come and opportunities come. And then you become part of a, what I call a greater consciousness by which you will be driven to greater heights. So this is important. And uh, I hope that those of you who are going to be deliberating uh, on various issues today will look at these issues and see how you can continuously contribute to the overall developments of science. I have been a big proponent in the Ministry of Health of what is called evidence-based practice. Very often policies are made out of perceptions, not on evidence. And I have been asking for this change that at least the Ministry of Health should be propelled by evidence. I cannot control the other ministries. So at least the Ministry of Health should be propelled by evidence that everything we do is not driven by perception. Because one man's perception, another man's perception can be totally different. But evidence based on collective process is something which, which should drive policies. And uh, I agree with what uh, Professor Saranjit Kaur said in a speech, that there should be an alignment between researchers and practitioners. I'm a strong proponent of the principle that the value of research should not gain dust in the racks of our libraries, but actually should benefit the people on the ground. <laughs> So for that purpose, there is a need for this alignment. And indeed, I have started various committees in the ministry to actually call in researchers in the various fields, share their knowledge before policies are promulgated. Even in the management of dengue, I have insisted upon that. In fact, under my specific instruction, the Dengue team was forced to look into all research papers which were done for the last 10 years for everybody to actually incorporate all that information and knowledge which came, which we might be able to use in our, in our major battle of Dengue. So I was quite glad when the Deputy Vice Chancellor uh, was telling about a program which we have started uh, on a community-based care. In, the, in, in, in combating the menace of dengue. Because it's a major issue for us. Unfortunately, very little international work is done by that. Because there's not much of Aedes mosquito in the United States except in the South. There's very little in the United Kingdom or Swansea, I think. <laughs> which may not actually stimulate the need to actually work on it. So for that purpose, I think we should be the ones who actually should be motivated to do this. And I have uh, told the Director General of Health that the next World Health Conference, which will be held somewhere in July next year, 
Malaysia will support a technical committee on dengue at international level. So then at least we can lead this, this move to bring the whole issue of dengue on the center stage of international science, rather than the sideline as a disease of Southeast Asia and the Pacific and the Caribbean, as what it is with sideline for the time being. So this is important, so that in that, I think all of you, as uh, scientists, you should put your minds to see how we can come up with new ideas and thoughts. And we should uh, give space for innovation and thinking. I visited the Boston Children's Hospital some time last year when I went to Harvard University and attended a course. And one thing they do in the hospital is very interesting. Every year they have what we call a weekend on innovation. So it's a very open weekend. Anybody, anywhere who has got a new idea can come and present the idea. And the hospital has got a method of listening to all these ideas and which we think is useful and can have hope they support it to develop it. So it's an open forum to promote thinking and innovation. Uh, and uh, we are thinking of doing the same. In the Ministry of Health, we can probably... <coughs> and we find great ideas. I, we have got these combi groups. These are grassroots groups in, to assist in dengue control. We had a symposium and we asked to present on a thing called OV, OV trap, which actually traps the, uh, the Aedes mosquito and they lay eggs and after that, when the eggs hatch, the mosquito can't fly. So by doing this, you actually reduce the density of mosquito in the environment because they are trapped. It was amazing how the community came out with different, different examples of OV traps which we never thought of. So this is the kind of thinking which is present within the community. And unless and until we actually we did provide an impetus for such thoughts to grow, we might not be able to get the benefit of this hidden intelligence which is within the community itself. So I think that's very important. And uh, I was struck by that, what the Deputy Vice Chancellor read from the Lancer on the, how the human race has become guilty of destroying old home ground. And this is real. And uh, I'm one of those uh, firm proponents that we need to do something urgently to protect our future. I was in Sweden about a couple of months ago attending an international forum on nutrition. I was invited as a speaker. And one of the messages which came very clearly out of that, uh, that forum was uh, that if we don't get our act together, as early as 2030, this is not too long ago, too long term, another 15 years, in at least reaching certain zero levels of further destruction, then we might go on a path of no return. And that is danger. That is real danger. So that will be the, but unfortunately, the selfishness of humankind will not see until it actually is in front of you at this moment in time. We don't have that capacity to even see 10 years ahead. If you tell that to those people who are involved in the process of destruction, they will tell you, it's not what I'm doing is affecting it, it's what all the other fellows are doing is right. Because of this kind of the human quality which is responsible for this destruction, we are facing what we have now. And I think it's very, very important that uh, all of us get together in this act so that we can serve, save whatever is left from further destruction. And the last part I want to touch is on that, as you all know, the Ministry of Health has been trying to develop an Allied, Sciences act, Allied Health Sciences Act. We've been doing this for a long time, and I think now it's matured, it's passed the Attorney General Chambers, it's gone to Parliament, it's gone past the first reading of Parliament. It's awaiting the second reading, and this is an attempt by the government to pro provide some kind of regulation, control, and preservation of professionalism within those 23 allied sciences which have been recognized. So it's something new, 
something very brave because I've seen attempting to regulate one profession itself is a huge daunting task and trying to regulate 23 different types is no joke. So I told the people who are responsible for it, start but take small steps because sometimes in this process being over ambitious can be self-destructive. So it's very important that you start, for, start and move slowly so that in the long term we can see a healthy regulatory framework for these 23 allied science professionals so they can work in a very professional environment practicing the science and promoting the science of those things. So that is going to come very soon. So I'm sure a lot of you probably were looking forward to it. So with that, I think we can look forward to a, a better environment. So with those words, I thank you again for having invited me to come and be part of this uh, session. And I hope your deliberations will be useful, meaningful, and contribute towards that part of this. Thank you. Now I would like to invite all our guests on stage to assist Dr. Tree in launching ICHI 2015.